Presenting, a three-dimensional map of the human genome at kilobase resolution reveals principles of chromatin looping. A cell paperflip. We study how the genome folds using an improved version of the Hi-C method that we introduced in 2009. The idea is to figure out which parts of the genome are touching when the genome is folded up. First, we freeze the DNA in place. Next, we cut the genome into tiny pieces. We mark the ends of DNA fragments using a molecule called biotin and glue them together in diffused pieces of DNA. The fused DNA is made up of two bits of the genome that are neighbors in 3D. In our improved protocol, all of this happens inside the nucleus of a cell. Finally, we fish out the molecules containing biotin and using DNA sequencing, identify the two parts of the genome inside each fused pair. The resulting dataset, one data point for each pair, is called a contact map. Our largest contact map is made up of over 4.9 billion pairs. These maps are too big to be drawn, but you can explore them interactively using a tool we built called Juicebox. Download it and take a look for yourself. Using our maps, we found that the genome is not just randomly crumpled up inside the nucleus. Instead, we see certain folds over and over again. Loops are one common fold. Each loop is made by taking two bits of DNA that are far apart along a chromosome and sticking them together. Loops are on average 200,000 DNA letters or base pairs long. Loops don't usually overlap one another. Together, they partition the genome. Why does the genome fold up in this loopy manner? One thing we often see is that when one of the ends of a loop lands at the beginning of a gene, the gene turns on. This is consistent with the classic notion that genes can be activated by elements called enhancers that lie far away along the genome's contour. Which proteins create these loops? We found that when we zoomed in on the ends of these loops, we almost always saw a protein called CTCF. CTCF can't bind just anywhere in the genome. It only binds to places where a particular word called a motif, is written in the DNA sequence. So of course, we found that this motif usually appears at both ends of a loop. Now, remember that DNA has two strands. If the motif is written on one of the strands, the CTCF protein will point in one direction. If the motif is written on the other strand, the CTCF protein will point in the other direction. In principle, a pair of motifs can be oriented in four different ways. They can both be pointing left. They can both be pointing right. They can be pointing away from one another. Or they can be pointing towards one another. We noticed an interesting rule. To form a loop, the two CTCF motifs have to be pointing towards one another. Inside the loop, DNA forms a condensed fold that we call a contact domain. Domains can also be created without loops. The typical contact domain is about 200,000 DNA base pairs long. That's pretty small. Previous reports suggested that the human genome is divided into much larger units, each around 1 million base pairs long. Nuclear DNA comes in different flavors, or chemical marks, that tell the cell what to do with a particular sequence. We found that all the DNA inside a domain tends to have the same marks. For example, it might have something called H3K36 trimethylation, which marks genes that are on. To turn the domain off, a cell might change the mark to H3K27 trimethylation, a repressive mark. There are many of these domains in the nucleus. We found that domains with similar marks tend to be located in the same place inside the nucleus. This is accomplished by creating nuclear subcompartments. 
spatial neighborhoods where domains with the same flavor hang out. These domains are not next to each other in the unfolded genome, so when the genome folds up, it must bring these domains to their appropriate subcompartments. In our original paper on high c we suggested that there were two compartments in the nucleus, segregating active and inactive DNA. We now discern at least six subcompartments, each with its own distinct set of marks. Finally, we looked at cells from a mouse and saw many of the folding principles that were present in human cells, loops, domains, and subcompartments, were present in mouse at corresponding genomic positions. We suspect that, like genes, folds will be conserved across species. So in conclusion, each cell in your body has the exact same genome inside, a blank sheet of origami paper just waiting to be folded. In origami, even the most complex designs can be produced using only two fundamental folds, the mountain fold and the valley fold. Your genome is the same way. We see only a few fundamental types of folds in our maps, loops, domains, and subcompartments. But these folds can be combined in limitless varieties. A loop that turns a gene on in one cell type might disappear in another. A domain may move from subcompartment to subcompartment as its flavor changes. No two cell types are folded alike. Folding drives function. Epigenetics is origami. <laughs>